turning to, uh, to one of this week's popular stories, no big surprise, it was a look under the hood, the four pillars of Ford's quality operating system, written by Ford's global manufacturing quality director, Adrian Vito. The four pillars that Vito discusses help Ford create a quality operating system that allows them to correlate internal data from every one of their plants and suppliers with, and this is the important bit, external customer data in order to make sure that they're building cars to, that today's consumers want to buy. So we are very pleased to have Adrian Vito with us this morning via WebEx. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning, fellas. Now, actually, I, uh, guess it's, for... I guess it's probably afternoon your time there. <laughs> Uh, yes, right now it's an afternoon. Yes. Okay. Well, let's let's start off by by um, uh, talking about one of your one of the pillars that you that you pointed out here, and I think this will help set the stage. One of the pillars, and I'm just reading from your article here: uh, getting external information quickly to each and every plant that needs it. When internal data comes in from our technicians, the information arrives in the plant that builds that particular product within 24 hours. And that, that sounds like a, a pretty quick response time for issues that come in. Absolutely, Dirk. And uh, I must say and compliment you on your fabulous opening on two key points throughout this uh, operating system I'm going to share with you today, and that is standardization and teaching. And specifically, um, w w in, in answering your question here on the information flow, uh, it is vitally important that the information flow that comes from the field, be it surveys or our dealer uh, technicians in, in our dealerships, is standard coming into the plants so that in our manufacturing locations, so that we there's no interpretation. The definition is clearly understood. We know exactly what the repair is or what the dislike is and we can go collectively to work on that because of one thing, a standard dictionary, a standard language that we use for sharing information from the external customer to our in uh, internal problem solvers. Well, that's interesting, Adrian, you mentioned that because voice of the customer, hey, it's, it's always a topic that we discuss sure. a lot here at Quality Digest that our, our users and, our, and our, our readers are always interested in. So, so this voice of the customer data that you accumulate in, in so many different streams comes into your company in this way, and, and you talk about that common dictionary, that common language. So again, maybe break it down for us. How exactly do you carry that information on what they want to design, to manufacture, all the different segments of your organization? Uh, very well, Mike. Uh, so first of all, uh, what we, uh, the mantra we call is every claim, every day. So every issue, and you, and you know to the 24-hour response, every verbatim, every a claim that comes in from the outside of field uh, is reviewed and understood within 24 hours in our manufacturing locations around the world, regardless of where you ship to. From there, the information is then taken by the appropriate technical resources to understand, first and foremost, how did it leave the building? And that addresses the, the measurement system that we have in our plants, which is also standard around the globe, whether you're in a powertrain plant, an assembly plant, or in a stamping plant. So when the voice of the customer issue comes into a manufacturing location, if I could simply kind of put the flow, it goes to our technical leader responsible for that type of defect, be it chassis, or be it powertrain, or be it electrical. It is in, it immediately within 24 hours, assessed on how it left our building, and do we need to make adjustments in our own internal measurement system so as that we can stop those potential issues from leaving the building from then forward. That is kind of the interim containment action that the information flow allows us to respond to, again, within 24 hours. And by the way, uh, Mike and Dirk, we measure how long it takes to put containment in place by adjusting our measurement system for every issue, every claim around the world. So, you're, you're, so it sounds like you, you've got a system in place that really um, uh, sounds like it empowers certain, certain levels along the way to, to take action once these come in. I mean, you, you have a system in place that determines who's responsible for that particular issue. It's passed on to them, and uh, it, it's their responsibility at that point to, to work on the containment. Do I have that right? You're absolutely right. You're, you're now uh, into the second pillar, actually, which is the infrastructure. Every manufacturing location is, is staffed with a cross-functional team that represents product design, advanced manufacturing, the manufacturing operations itself, and very importantly, 
our supply base. So when an issue comes in, that infrastructure, uh, again, based on the nature of the issue coming in, is clearly uh, assigned with the right skill set team to go and address that, be it supplier, design, or manufacturer. Yes, that's the second pillar, having the right staffing levels with the right skill set inside the manufacturing locations. Now, what about what about processes and, and tools? What type of, uh, if, if you're, I, I know sometimes this stuff is, is sensitive, but as much as you can, uh, what kind of specific types of, of processes and tools does Ford use internally in, in order to maintain, and, uh, maintain quality and continuously improve? So obviously the first and foremost is a standard inspection process where all inspection points within an assembly plant or an engine plant transmission plant is all predefined by the standard holders like myself that need to be uh, first of all understood we call that competency and then adhered to which is adherence and we assess ourselves to that standard inspection process on a quarterly basis on well how well our voice of the customer uh, requirements are understood and secondly adhered to uh, it's actually a very simple you, you, you said something that was really interesting. What, what do you mean assess yourself quarterly? That, and, and, and what are you assessing to? So the standard inspection process is just one of, of many processes and tools that we have in our assembly plants, which is, by the way, the third pillar. It <laughs> contains all the, all the processes and tools in our plants that we expect our plants to fully understand and adhere to. Now, to that end, we have regional quality offices that working with the operations ensure both the competency and adherence and we allow the plants to self-assess. We don't want to be uh, police who give out speeding tickets for, not, for, for, for failing to obey the law, but we do have a self-assessment that the plants provide up to their regional offices, ultimately up to myself being the global office, on how well they understand what is being asked of them, first of all, and if they, if they are not understanding of the process or the standard or the method, it is their opportunity to voice training is required, teaching is required, as you pointed out earlier, Mike. The second element of that is if you understand it well, in fact, are you adhering to it very robustly? There is no uh, um, subjectivity allowed here. The standards are very clearly written in what we expect all plants to, to, to follow. The importance of that is clearly if we have a best practice in a standard that we understand in one particular plant or region, if we were not standard to the level of specificity that we asked for, we would then not be able to share that same learning across all near 100 plants that we have in the globe overnight basically. Adrian, I'd like to jump in here with a question. I want to get back to customers for a minute. It's, it's one of my uh, interest areas, areas of interest. Um, you know, it's been, let's be honest, it's been a tough four or five years for the auto industry in the U.S. Sure. Uh, we're, we're, we're coming out of that era, I think, now, and, and certainly we've seen improvements, and we've seen improvements, Ford has seen improvements in, say, the J.D. Power and Associates initial quality studies. Uh, what do you attribute the fact that, that there's, been, there's been better quality, there's been better receptivity amongst the, the consumers to the Ford brand? What, what do you attribute that to over the past couple of years? Well, I, I, I wouldn't say that uh, we haven't done this in the past, but uh, what I think we have done more so in the last uh, five or six years, uh, primarily, and probably more so is, you know, I mean, we, we've, we've always, in, in all businesses, uh, it's not just uh, contained to, to automotive, we have typically engineering specifications. And sometimes as we are, and I am one myself, a proud engineer, uh, we have engineering specifications for producing the great products that we have. We always have in the 100 plus year history of Ford Motor Company. But there might be a time where we have a blind spot where the engineering specifications are not necessarily meeting the customer specifications. So I think to the point we alluded to earlier uh, relative to information flow and the voice of the customer in our first pillar is I believe strongly and evidenced by the dependability scores we've received, initial quality scores, uh, scores and appeal study scores, is that we are adjusting, forever adjusting, our engineering standards to be more correlated and reflective of the customer standards. That's really where it all starts. And that's why we need the information flow to come back and feed in and say, are we making those right adjustments fast enough for what the consumer wants, i.e. the most recent uh, trend obviously is around connectivity and technology advancement. 
Well, let, let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit. So, obviously, uh, obviously, your responsibility is is quality. When new product design starts to roll out and, and new features and so forth, does quality or or how does quality, I should say, get involved in the new product? Development are they in on the on the design phase in, in terms of uh, feeding back, let's say, lessons learned into the design team? I mean, how, how does that work? Uh, very, very good question, and, and probably twofold response. Uh, first and foremost, the answer is absolutely that quality is in, involved in the upfront uh, decision making of the product, and it's really not even again remembering the fact that it's not about engineering and what engineering or quality thing. It's about having customer clinics. Uh, with, our, with the field in, in the specific regions where their product will be sold and actually getting some direct feedback from the consumer on some conceptual thoughts, designs, and, and sometimes physical properties around a product that we might have in the pipeline that we're considering. So, that, uh, so that's one uh, piece of it. The second piece is obviously as we go in the current model space, uh, Dirk, we're learning things. And so the quality operating system that has the four pillars is in fact, to your point, a closed loop process where it takes those very lessons learned, sometimes hard lessons learned, and feeds them back in into the upstream development of product and development of process for incorporations so that we don't repeat the same mistake. Well, great, and, and actually that, that sums, it up, <laughs> sums it up really nicely. We got through the four pillars, and that it is actually a, a feedback process, which I think is what, uh, what everybody realizes is what you need in order to maintain quality. Well, the, um, Adrian, I'm sorry, <laughs> we, we've, got to, uh, we've got to go now. I really appreciate you being on the show with us today and kind of going through the four pillars of your, um, of your quality, uh, continuous quality improvement system there at Ford. Thanks for joining us.